Wow. We'll wrap up in two seconds. I have one question. If they were going to make you, you have such an interesting story. You are so open and honest and just, that's why I love you. If they were going to make a movie about your life, you know, and they were going to cast, you know, a young Anne Heche, like say, you know, at the beginning of your career, any, any actress come to mind? Miley Cyrus or Kristen Bell. I've already thought about it. Miley, Miley Cyrus or Kristen Bell. And I, I do want to do my movie. I do want to, my next book is coming out and it's called Call Me Sane. It's the flip side. It's the practice of how to get over abuse and how to start the process of living in love with yourself that engages with others and living in love and the kindness when you can bring yourself to others in a full capacity. But when I think about those stories and the journey that I've gone through and I think of the rock stars who, for me, and I, of course, Miley is a rock star, who can who um, can pull off the humor that I have? I think those two girls. I did a movie with Kristen Bell. God bless her. I love her so much. Um, I it's it, the two of them share a, um, a personality uh, ability to to face the world the way that uh, I would want. Um, I, I I feel like I have and I would want to trade. You know, you say you're not up on pop culture, but Miley Cyrus and those are two. That's I could really I'm learning why why Miley I mean I'm I'm here for it but why Miley I think Miley is I I mean she first of all the fact that she did Hannah Montana now I started as a young actor I started at 12 supporting my family but it was in dinner theater in Swain New Jersey people didn't know anything about it but making that 100 bucks a night going out on stage and doing that was uh the training forget it the ability for her to be able to pull up. Then I played twins. I've seen her Hannah Montana to be able to do that, to be able to express that, to be able to be as bold as she's been going from Disney into, you know, wrecking ball her, the way she moves, the way she see her voice, her, her compassion. She fucking loves everybody. She, her ability to get out on stage and sing a, a cappella. That would be the way that I would see a pure, a pure artist engaging with the world with the best time they could ever possibly have. That's why Miley, and I think she's a fucking great actress. Uh, Kristen Bell gave me my second Emmy nomination. She and I played um, a mother and daughter in a Lifetime movie years ago. And uh, Kristen's, um, again, felt like a reflection to me, a, a dedicated, her ability to tell story do it through joy do it with her personality charm gorgeous timing and humor um i see i I see myself a lot in her so um and uh, i don't think it was any mistake that i played her mom and i want her to play me i love those two answers and i can see them i could actually see them right yes and i could play their mom i could play my mother Ooh, bitch that would get some ratings. I was going to say, maybe that's a third book. <laughs> Speaking about your book, and then we could wrap up, like, call me crazy, you know, and like the world, especially during COVID is so open and honest. Also, I feel these days about mental health, maybe not where yes. we should be, but yes. we're certainly further than we sh- were you know, you were somebody. Well, Harry has had a lot to do with that. And Oprah's had a lot to do with that. I mean, there have been a real, they didn't ask me to be a part of that documentary. Again, I'm like, hello. I'm like the number one person that talks about mental health. Mental health is the things, I think Harry describes it as the things that you were given. I feel the same way. Um, There is a threshold for understanding what happens to us when we disconnect because we're being treated badly. Whatever entity you become out of that to save yourself, to help yourself, to intrigue yourself, mine may have been more specific than others, but why I told my story is to say whatever your, whatever your cushion is that you have given yourself, when somebody strips you of your identity because of any kind of abuse, I mean, anything going in that feels bad and not good, and those are layers. We all have different opportunities in there. There are different ways we've all been raised. But depending on, this goes back to two cups in and one cup out, depending on how severe that input was, is how severe your intelligence of your identity has to be shaped because you're trying to figure out the sanity of what you are being told you're insane about. 
So, so that is a, that's why I told my story as truthfully as I did. Our mental health is part of that equation is how we survive the things that go in feeling bad. And that is redefinition of our identity so that we can survive it. And the more severe it gets, the survivors get further and further away as they try to train themselves to understand and identify for themselves. And understanding with others who don't have compassion and those who understand. We identify with what we can in order to survive our stripping of identity. They're equal. One goes in one way. And what goes, so what we watch in mental health is that reflection. Wow, that person, that person must have gone through a lot because they're acting this way. That means that there's a balance point to what got taken from them that they're feeling they need to identify. My goal is to get those things looking at each other in an equal opportunity to understand the mental health, to understand and look at, which takes responsibility again from the generation that raised those children, me or whatever it was, and start to balance out the understanding of their new identification in order to survive. So we've got a lot of work to do, which is what I've been spending my last 20 years on, to go, wow, you tell your story. That's how I identify you. How do we embrace that? That's what call me crazy is call me sane is the antidote. We go, okay, how can I get into a system of reclaiming my identity, helping others to find theirs and giving us some steps and some processes and some practices that could help us re-identify with ourselves more quickly, with a little less pain, and with support around you, they can answer some questions. And that's who I am. I love it. I can't wait for the new book. A final question. What do you think is the biggest misconception about Anne Hage? Um, I don't know. I would have to, well, I would have to look at the, the biggest misconception is that I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm the same person as God. If people listen to your podcast and they don't fit, yes, everything you say on your show makes sense, complete sense. And everything you've said here makes oh, sense. That's my journey. That's my goal. My goal is to make sense out of this love, turn it into a science and make sure that everybody can feel it and experience it and give it to others. Cause that really is our joy and pleasure. I completely appreciate you taking your time and from Thank really, you too. Thank you. where can everyone find you and where can everyone find your podcast? Well, you know, you can go to anh.com. You can go better to Together with Ann and Heather, you can listen to us on Spotify or any place else you listen to your podcast. 